Hi, this is Patrick Kilby with Rio Products. Welcome to another session of Rio's Tying the Fly. On the vise today, we have an iconic fly, the elk hair caddis. We're going to start with a size 14 short shank dry fly hook. We're going to start our thread at about the three quarter mark. And that will help us to determine where to stop our body. So we've locked in our thread and we're going to start wrapping it back a few turns. Now we're going to add in our very small copper wire. This wire can be any color, really. It's not going to be seen for the most part. It's really more for fortifying the hackle on this fly so that trout teeth don't break it off too easily. So we're going to secure that in. And we're going to wrap this back to a point even with our barb of the hook. We're going to move this wire back out of our way until we're ready for it. Next, we're going to add in some dubbing. This is a dry fly dubbing that can make a very tight um, application around this thread so that we can control the size of the body. Caddis are not very big around, so less is more. You don't need very much to make a caddis body. So we're going to just take a little bit off of this. And we are going to put this on our thread and we're going to spread it out. And we're going to just twist with pressure between our thumb and our forefinger. We're going to make this nice and tight. Now we can start winding this forward. And we're going to come up to that point where we started our thread. We can wind back about halfway. And then halfway or from there back up to the front. And what that gives us is this slight carrot shaped taper. So a little bit thicker up here and thinner back here, which is a, really the shape of those insects. We're ready for our dry fly hackle. Your hackle needs to be sized appropriately for the hook you're tying on. And if you'd like to learn more about that, there is a video in our Rio's fly tying tips that will help you use a hackle gauge to determine that right size hackle for your hook. So we're going to tie it in just above the base of this. We can remove some of the base to expose the stem. And we want this to start in a pretty upright position. So we are going to tie this in rather upright. And then we're going to bend the stem back and tie this back to help keep that in a nice upright position and keep it locked in so it doesn't slip out. We're going to trim this excess stem off. Now, using our hackle pliers, we're going to capture the end of that hackle. And we're going to take about five turns or so. One. So that was about five and a half turns to the end of the body. I'm going to now bring my thread or my wire into play and I'm going to use this like thread. So I'm going to use it to capture that, that hackle. And as I wind this up, I'm capturing down all of those hackle fibers that we just wrapped back. You'll notice I am kind of wiggling this back and forth as I work my way forward and that just helps to get the wire down into the base and not trap down my nice dry fly hackles there. I'm going to bring my thread behind the wire and trap it down, bring the wire back in front and ensure that it's locked in place. We have scissors that we have 
taken out of commission. We've marked them red. This tells us they're safe to use on our wire and we don't ruin our nice scissors with trimming wire. And now we want to remove this hackle tip from the back. We're going to just slide the tip of our good scissors in to the base of that feather and trim it off. Okay, there's our body of our dry fly elk hair caddis. You'll notice that my hackle fibers here just barely extend beyond the tip of the hook. That's the appropriate sized hackle for this fly. Now we're going to go for its namesake. Where it gets its name from is the elk hair. We're using bleached elk hair in this case, and we're just going to take we're going to take a bundle of this elk hair, hair, elk hair, and use it as a wing on top of this. So we're just going to get a bundle uh, separated out from this patch, and we're going to trim this off of the hide. So now we have it pulled off of the hide. I'm going to transfer into my other hand. And you'll notice all these little whiskery fibers inside there. Those are the under fur of this, uh, from this hide. We don't want those in there because they're going to prevent us from stacking these hairs. So to quickly get rid of them, what I like to do is just twist my fingers to open this up a bit. And then I just hit it with my scissors and you'll see it starts to release those bits of under fur until it feels like they're mostly gone. Then I can gather this back up into a little bundle. And now I'm ready to stack this. So I have our elk hair stack or our hair stacker, I should say. And this is two pieces. One slides out of the other. I'm going to take the tips and slide those in to our hair stacker. Okay, by stacking, we're aligning all the fibers back so it's a nice, clean look. We're going to keep our hair stacker more or less horizontal, if not slightly tilted back down. And we're going to slide off the base. And you'll notice all those fibers are nicely aligned. We are going to keep that alignment the best we can by pinching and removing them. We take a visual look to make sure our guard hairs are more or less cleaned out, which they are. I'm going to transfer back to my other hand. And for the length, I'm going to go, I'm going to aim to have the ends of these hackle or hair fibers lined up with the bend of the hook. So the body of my caddis ends up here. The wing extends just beyond to the bend of the hook. So I am going to line this on here and just make sure that it's hitting to the right place. Then I'm going to transfer back. I'm going to take one loose wrap and I'm going to pull up to start flaring this. I'm pinching very hard with these two fingers to ensure that it's not rotating over and it's going to stay in this alignment. And I'm going to take at least five turns all in the exact same spot. I'm really locking those down with each turn. I don't want the weight of this thread and those turns to rotate this material over. So I'm going to hold that in place and stroke all these back and move my thread to the front and take a few turns, which should stop the materials from wanting to rotate. So now we can bring back these front fibers and we're going to trim these off. Doing our best to keep the fibers we want 
and get rid of the ones we don't want. So after you get all these bundled back up, you're going to trim this very close to the eye of the hook. We're going to do a whip finish and then we'll do a final cleanup on our head and just a second. So let's whip finish this. Just right in front of that head. What that does is it lifts up that head. And keeps it in that position. Trim off our excess. These are good scissors for that. Now we can do a final cleanup. So we can just shorten up this head. And we can take any fibers that have strayed down below off of this fly. And what I mean by down below, I'm saying if the fly is sitting on the water, those wings should extend down to the surface of the water. They shouldn't go past that. You want them to serve as keels on this fly. So that wing should just come down and sit flush on the water and go back to the bend of the hook. So from there, now we can just secure this with some head cement. Just we don't want that head to rotate or come off. So for the head cement, I'm going to apply some to a bodkin. Doesn't take much. And I'm going to put this in on the, right on the threads. We'll let a little bit soak into those fibers there and that will help fortify the head of this fly. And there you have it. The elk hair caddis, this is a tan version. There's olive versions, there's orange versions. It's, it's whatever you want to make of it. But tan and olive are going to be your staples through the summer and your bigger size eight or so October caddis is going to come into play in late August, early September, and so on. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I appreciate you letting me share this iconic pattern with you. Thank you.